Hey, Bishop Frank Dupre here, and I got a little message for you. I hope it's inspirational for you. Okay, I'm going to talk to you from the book of Joshua chapter 6. And I want to ask you a question first. Do you have any walls in your life? Are there things that are surrounding you and your family that you want them broken down like the walls of Jericho? Would you like to see them fall down flat just like they did and you go in and you take the land, you take what's yours in God? Well, if you do, I want to give you a little tip, okay? One of the first things that happened when Israel crossed over the Jordan to go and take the city of Jericho is they were reconsecrated to God. All the men were circumcised on the eastern side of the plains of Jericho at a place that they named Gilgal, which means rolling away. God rolled away everything, all the reproach of Egypt that spiritually was still upon them. Can you imagine they walked with God? They're walking in the wilderness. They're 40 years after they came out, and they still had junk spiritually on them that God had to roll away. So you can be saved, but you know, sometimes there's junk on us. You know, there's so much junk in the world. There's so much garbage in the world. You know, everywhere you turn, there's this movie, there's that song, there's the way people dress, there's all this stuff assaulting our senses constantly, and we need to be reconsecrated to God. So I want to encourage you right now to make up your mind that when you are finished watching me and listening to me, you are going to take the time, whether it's right away or in a little while, and you're going to reconsecrate yourself to Jesus. You're going to check yourself, examine yourself, and see if you're in the faith, like Peter said. Now, the second thing is this. When they went to the city of Jericho, and they and all the mighty men marched around the city, they didn't march at around the city in the dark. No, they marched in the light. And that's the second part. You see, you can reconsecrate yourself, but there may be some hidden things that are deep in your life, some secret sins or secret faults. Your besetting sin, the Bible says, the one that keeps coming back over and over again. Time goes by, you're okay, and all of a sudden it's back again. You need to live in the open with transparency. You need to make sure that your life is clean before the Lord. So you reconsecrate yourself, get the reproach of the world rolled off of you, and then you walk in the light as he is in the light. And then God is going to help you knock those walls down. You see, God can't do for you what you want him to do for you when your life has garbage in it. You can't be porous. You can't have junk coming in and glory coming in. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve the world and serve God. You can't dress for the devil and dance for Jesus. You can't. You got to change your lifestyle. Some, some, of, some of the girls you're listening, some of you ladies listening, you got to change the way you dress. You can't, you know, you're attractive and that's fine. And you want to let your glory, let your beauty be seen. But you don't want to be attracting men the wrong way. And men, you know, we do this, men do the same thing. They, they will do certain things to attract a woman or whatever. You got to be careful. You got to be clean before the Lord. You got to have your mind clean. You got to serve God. By the way, I'm at a light so I can use both hands. But you got to be walking with God. You have to walk in the light as he is in the light. No hidden stuff. No hidden stuff at all. No magazines that you shouldn't have. No movies that you shouldn't be going to. No, you know, uh, you know, you got those special, you know, premium channels on your cable. You know, the ones with the, you know what I'm talking about? None of that stuff either. You got to get clean before God. And if you're walking clean before God, there's something you got to do. You got to make sure you got mercy on others. Have mercy on those who are not walking as clean as you and ask God's grace upon their life. God had mercy on Rahab, who was a harlot. She was a madam. She ran an inn. She ran a house of prostitution. But God had mercy on her. And she didn't stop running the house of prostitution just because she got the promise that she's going to get saved. She continued with that stuff. But when she was set free, she was set free. Her life then lived in the open. And you know what she, You know what God did? God brought to her a man of God. His name was Salmon. And they had a baby boy. And they named that boy Boaz. And that boy Boaz became a redeemer. And he redeemed Ruth, who was a Moabitess, who was not allowed to be in the camp of Israel. But God redeemed her. God redeemed Rahab. God redeemed Ruth. And then Ruth married Boaz. And they had a son. And his name was Jesse. And Jesse and his wife had a lot of boys, 
And the last one they had was named David, and he became the king. God will take you no matter where your life is, no matter what you're involved in, no matter who you've been, no matter what you've done, God wants to redeem your life. And it all starts with consecrating yourself to him. It all starts with getting rid of the junk, living in the light, no, having no hidden things, walking in transparency, and let God be God. And he'll bless you and touch you and keep your life in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against hidden faults. In the name of Jesus, I come against hidden things. In the name of Jesus, I, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life as you're watching me, as you're listening. The blood of Jesus Christ upon your heart and your mind. Whether you're walking with God or not walking with God, that the drawing power of the Holy Spirit will draw you close to him right now in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. God bless you now in Jesus' name.